All right, Michael Pope, welcome to Empower Network TV. Very excited you're here, sir. Thank you, Amos. Happy to be here. Cindy, thank you for inviting Michael Pope to the Empower Network TV. Now, Michael Pope, the coach's tech guy, you said you did 28 years in tech. So you specialize now in doing what for coaches, speakers, trainers, authors, business owners? What do you do? Yeah, so my number one thing that I, that I love doing for coaches is helping them avoid tech overwhelm. So really what I realized is that most coaches need to have a tech component to their business, whether it's online scheduling, social media scheduling, oh, if it's yeah. setting up their Zoom environment, their StreamYard environment, helping them with that without them getting overwhelmed with the technology. Oh yeah, like speaking from firsthand experience, like <laughs> automations is, it's like it lifts the burden off your shoulders when there's proper yes. automations and systems. Without that, you're literally... How well can you write things down and remember them or how you're let to schedule everything on here and you're not scalable after you get to maybe 10 grand a month after that you're screwed. Yeah. 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 I'm all about helping people in increase their productivity. And like you said, I mean, if you're having to, you shouldn't have to be think of, thinking about repeatable tasks, right? Like you shouldn't have to think about how do you go live? Like that process should all be set up for you where it's an easy process where someone can fill out an application, they're scheduled on your show, you're able to go live. Um, it's oh. a no brainer for you, right? Can you repeat that sentence? You shouldn't have to think about. You shouldn't have to think about repeatable tasks, things that you do on a regular basis. It should yeah. be really easy for you to do. Okay. Okay. So a lot of business owners, Michael, it's not easy for them to do. Yeah. So Let's take them down the rabbit hole of how did you, what's your story? How'd you get into this? Why'd you get into this? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, so the last 28 years I've worked as a software developer, been in the IT industry, absolutely loving that. 2019, Amos, I joined the coaching industry. I became certified with the John Maxwell team and went in just as a regular coach, learning the methodology there about how to coach. And then, of course, around 2020, when COVID hit, everything went digital. And a lot of people were frozen. They were like, okay, I'm great at what I do as a coach, but I have no clue how to do any of this technology thing. And so people started asking questions. And so I did what I normally do anyway, is I started providing solutions. So I started providing solutions to several coaches. And I was asked by the John Maxwell team to actually become one of their paid instructors. So I'm, an, I'm a paid instructor with the John Maxwell team. Then I got asked to join Joseph McLennan's coaching program to help coach some of their um, coaches as well on technology and marketing things. But it's just because I, I identify the need and I had solutions for coaches. Well, 28 years in tech, I would assume you have several solutions <laughs> for coaches. Yes. You know, what do you like about tech? What is it that floats your boat? Yeah, I, I love technology. And the thing that I think really floats my boat about technology is that you can quickly get a result, right? If I, if I create a website or a web page or a landing page, I get an immediate result. I can see what, how it looks. I can make changes to it. Uh, but I, I just love it. And I've loved it ever since I was a little kid, just dabbling with different technologies and all that ever since I was a little kid. Okay, so seriously, so what, at 10, 12, 6, what were you doing? Were you playing video games? What were you doing? <laughs> yes, yeah, so my first my first computer was a Commodore 64 back when I was in the sixth grade. And 1980s, between the summer, 1980s. Yes, yes, yes. I'm 49 years old, everybody, so yeah, right? So yeah, so when I got that Commodore 64, and I used to type in games into the program, and then what happened was I had a Commodore Gazette magazine and then there was an article in there that said, hey, if you write a program and send it into us, we may use it in our magazine. Well, I did. I was uh, I created a, I, I figured out a solution using code. I submitted it to the magazine and they sent me back a check, Amos, for three hundred dollars. And as a seventh grader at the time, that felt like a million bucks. And I was like, wow, I can actually make money providing coding solutions. And so that really got me involved with computer science from a young age. And, and I just kept going from there. 300 bucks in like 1980, whatever, four, five, six. That's a lot of money, man, for back on. Yes. Okay, so you kept going. So you were bit with the bug early and then you've just stayed in that. Now it's morphed because you've, you worked, what, what parts of IT did you work in? 
mostly software development. So, so internal website development, application development, that's been the main areas. But of course, I've dabbled over the last 20 years, I've dabbled for in a few different industries, well, a few different areas within the same industry, because I work for the same company for the last 20 years as well. Okay, so you your personality is a systems, you like systems and structure, but you're also creative. Yes. Yes. Okay, do you develop so do you use a lot of third party stuff? Are you ever writing code if there's not quite the right solution for your client? How does that work? Yeah, so a lot of times I will use third party solutions. I can do custom creations, but I but I what I realize is that that takes more work. A lot of times there's already third party solutions available. So my job is to figure out those third party solutions. If I need to have a right to create some type of API or some type of interface in between it using something like a Zappy or something like that, I can do that. But in terms of in nowadays, you really don't have to write a whole lot of custom code. You just got to know what software to use for that problem. Okay. So the average coach coming to you today, yeah. Michael, and they're like, yeah, I'm making some sales, but I'm so frustrated with tech. I want to throw my laptop out the window. <laughs> Heard that before. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so frustrating for so many people. So what is the light at the end of the tunnel? What is the runway to get me there? Yes. What is, what is the approximate cost to build out some of the systems? Is it, can you give us a general timeline and costs? And then what does that life look like when the burden is lifted, Michael? Yeah. So one of the first things that I love to do with new clients or potential clients is get a good inventory of what they've already purchased. Because I, I found there's a lot of there's a lot of clients will come to me and they've got software that does the same thing because maybe they attended a challenge and they were offering this program. So they said, well, I'm gonna buy that software and I'm gonna buy that software, but they don't really know how they work together and they don't realize there's a lot of um, redundancy in their software. So what I like to do first is just get an inventory of what they currently have paid for already. And then we try to identify, okay, what are you actually using? And what can we get rid of? So as soon as we can trim some of the fat, and then we say, okay, at the bare minimum, you need to have some type of scheduling program. It doesn't matter whether it's book like a boss, whether it's calendar, acuity. We need to have some type of way where your potential clients can, can schedule an appointment with you, and they're going to receive a reminder email or a reminder text message without you having to be involved. Right? So we get the, the bare basics. Then I figure out, okay, what type of payment processor do you have in place for your coaching services? And it doesn't really matter what it is, but they need to have something in place. And I'll make sure that we have, okay, if you have high ticket items, well, we need to have a way where you can have split payments or monthly payment options available for people. And you want to have it where they're going to automatically get charged versus you having to send them a manual invoice every single month to remind them, hey, you need to pay your bill. You need to pay your bill. Right, you want to get away from that. So really simplify that process to where is when a someone comes to you and it says, Amos, I'm hey, I want to be coached by you. I have money. How can I pay you? Right. So you want to make that process as easy as possible for people. And they're going to get their reminder emails and all in all and the onboarding information and all that. Right. It's already set up where you don't have to think about it. You just got to meet with me, coach me, and we can keep moving forward. I love it because, uh, Michael, I've been on the side of like, when I understand tech, I'm fine. Probably most people, once they understand it, they're fine. But there mm -hmm. is a mountain of frustration between that, or it feels like that. And like when you're at the, the beginning, looking up at that going, dear God, how in the world am I going to learn this? Yeah, when I get started. <laughs> okay, so do you have, what is, what is your process like? Do you work one-on-one? -on -one? Do you have group stuff? Do you have a Facebook community you run? What are you offering? Yeah, so a couple things. So one, I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one work because a lot of my clients' needs are specific for them. And then it's software they've already purchased. So I'll do a lot of work one-on-one. -on -one. But then I also do some more educational classes. So I have a Tech Ready Coaches membership program that I do where we meet twice a month on Zoom and we cover different tech topics that are common for most coaches. And so we'll go through how to do it and they can ask me questions. So as an example, we did an intensive training on how to use Canva from everything from doing your basic social media, creating social media um, assets using Canva to creating a Zoom waiting room video. Like a lot of people don't realize that you can actually have a, a video in Zoom where when people are waiting to, to join your Zoom, you can start, you can be marketing to them right there while they're waiting. 
And so we, we've set up those type of assets. So lots of things in Canva. And so, okay, you're looking to have a oh, interviewing type show. So let's look at the different options, whether it's going to be a stream yard, restream, Zoom, whatever platform, and then let's set that up. And so just really educating them on some of the technology that's available. Hang on a second. When people join your Zoom room, you can have it pitching them before you show up for a minute or two or three? Yes. Yes. So I'll have to show you my waiting room video. It is it's, it's cool. Uh, so that's a technology. It's a third party. The SaaS? No, no. So it's just in Zoom, right? So it's just Zoom allows you to upload a video to the waiting room. What? Okay. Okay. And what's the length? What length can you upload? It has to be less than 30 megabytes. Mine is like a minute and 40 seconds. Oh my gosh. That's like, that's like preparatory. That's like, <laughs> yeah. a call, it's a call center. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Like most people like, and if someone joins my Zoom, I'll let them stay in the waiting room for at least a couple of minutes so they can see the video. And then their first response is like, okay, how did you do that? I didn't even know you could, that was possible, right? Okay, well, <laughs> we're, I'm going to be asking about that. Okay, so. Well, you, sorry, I, I said that because I noticed you didn't have one. So yeah, so yeah. yeah I'm thrown off now. And I'm like, that sounds amazing. Okay, um, where do we go from here? What else are we talking about, Michael? Yeah, I tell you what. So, so my biggest thing is I I don't like seeing people feel overwhelmed with technology, and so my whole goal is to keep it as simple as possible for them, and to let them know that you really can't break the tech. Um, but once you learn it, and just once you learn the basics, I mean, it can definitely be a game changer for you because it's a great time saver, even with AI, right? There's a lot of, a lot of talk about AI right now, and there's right ways to use AI, and there's wrong ways to use AI. But once you get the right way and you've got a good system in place, I mean, it's, it's going to be a great time saver for everybody that's using it. Well, I'm glad. Um... Cindy, I'm glad Cindy Gould. Um, Cindy is awesome. I love she's Cindy. amazing. I'm glad she invited you here. So did you meet her through the coaching uh, neuro? Yeah, neuro encoding. coding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so how are people going to get a hold of you? Like, please come back and obviously post links in the comment yeah. section. Uh, like, do you have multiple links to post? Do you have, you have a book there. We're going to talk about your book still. Oh yeah, yeah. So I wrote so my book. I did a um, keynote at the at Joseph McClendon's Neuroencoding Conference this past year. So back in April, keynote was Gadget Guide, Gadgets Guide to Marketing, hour long keynote. And so based on that keynote, I took that keynote and turned it into a book um, to really give um, give coaches and speakers some some basic marketing techniques that they can use to really grow their business. And You're so all about repurposing thing. content, repurposing content. I took my yeah, keynote. Did you absolutely. guys notice he said that? Yes. I took my keynote. So I planned out my keynote. I said my keynote. I recorded my keynote, turned it into a book. Did you use AI? What did you use for that? Absolutely. I used AI. I took my script, put it in AI, got the formatting and absolutely. And I was able to do it in less than a, less than a month, really. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, wow. that's just using technology on my side. So you can definitely take a, take a look at my book. My website is michaelpoketraining.com. That's one of the best ways to find me. And I'm on social media everywhere at Michael J. Pope Jr. So Facebook, okay. LinkedIn, Instagram. All right. You've made your father proud. <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome. Okay. So what else you've just kind of power packed here in the last, what, we had 15 minutes, 60 minutes. What else do you want to talk about, Michael? Yeah, so I'll tell you, I'm just, I'm passionate about what I do as coaches. So I, I love what the coaching industry can do for other people. So I love watching my clients win as well, because as coaches and in this space, we have a, I think a moral obligation really to really continue to add value to people. And people need coaching in today's time. Um, there's such a need for people to, to, to experience what we have access to as coaches. And I love that. And I'm, I'm a natural introvert, Amos. And so for me, going through being coached as a young, when I was a young, in my early 20s, so being first being coached and learning how to go from being an introvert to someone who loves public speaking now and, and connecting with people, it was all about personal growth. 
And I think as coaches, we really can add so much value and really help people with their personal growth journey. I like how you said that, like, especially with the way the world is right now, like, oh man, that's probably part of the reason why this group has taken off is because people are hungry, Michael, mm -hmm. for empowerment. And part of empowerment is tech solutions because yeah. we live in a tech world. You cannot not use tech. Exactly. Oh, I, I, yeah. If you're listening, watching this, please reach out to Michael and let him know what you appreciate about this. He'd love to connect with you, obviously. Michael, I don't want to cut you short. I'm just, what do you want to talk about next? You've, uh, you kind of blew my socks off here. That's it. Nothing else really, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm happy to be a part of the, part of the network. I, I love to see what you've got going on with this community you're building, looking forward to learning more about it and just being able to add value to your community as well. Okay. I'm sensing I need to ask you to come on to a, a tech round table where we'll talk about all sorts of tech. I got one or two other yeah. people I can invite you on, invite on for that. So I'll reach out to you after this. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for being on today. You are a blessing, brother. And um, thank you. You, are too. you wet my whistle, man. And now I'm like, oh, man, you kidding me? I can put a freaking video on my Zoom thing and my waiting was no. genius and just show up. Oh, I'm just two minutes late. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Did you like my video? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Right. If you have been watching, listening to Empower Never TV, you've been listening to Michael Pope, the coach's tech guy today. Please mm -hmm. reach out to him. Let him know what you appreciate about him. He'd love to connect with you. He'll be dropping any links, pertinent links to his Zoom or to in, in here in the comments, in the Facebook group after I tag him to his book, his website, whatever else he's got going on. So Michael, I will reach out to you. Yes. We'll arrange that round table, tech round table. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. So uh, look forward looking to that. forward to it. Hey, we'll chat soon, sir. I'll message you after Thank this. You. All right. Bye-bye.